Now entering Nerdist.com. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. Jackie Cation, Laurie Kilmartin. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. Ugh. Jackie talking to me before the mics are turned on. I know. What am I? Th- what was I thinking? Stop it. Stop it. You were the one who sent me the 20 things about merch today that oh, Amy Miller did. That was awesome. It was pretty great. Yeah. Uh, I, here's what I don't approve, of course. This $10, $15 a pop business. Amy Miller, 20 bucks. Everyone's 20 oh, bucks. yeah. You're, you're merciless. I am ruthless. Uh, I Peoria, I sold. Do people ever complain? No. No. no they they I, just hand you a 20 and walk away. Yeah. Yeah. And then they never complain. If they if they, they think it's too much, they don't buy it. And I always say everything's half price digitally online, and then the T-shirts are actually more expensive online. And there was one thing she did write that I didn't agree with, actually. She mm-hmm. said, um, don't give deals to the other comics. And I do give deals to the other. I mean, the she CDs. Said do, I think she said do give deals. Do give deals. And yeah. I, I can give deals on CDs and DVDs. Yeah. Uh, but the profit margin on a union-made T-shirt is too great it yeah. is there's no there's Plus no you gotta profit. carry that thing it's like five pounds each right well it's uh yeah the heavy lifting no th- i mean if it were just schlepping of stuff i would i would if if there was enough like yeah i might as well hand each comic eleven dollars because that's how much each of those shirts costs. oh i thought she meant just charge them the cost of it Right. But the thing is, is I can't charge them the cost of the T-shirts because the T-shirts are finite. I can only order them in 100 lots. There's... You can't amortize and is that, did I use that word right? And Who figure knows? out exactly how much. I think so. It sounds okay. It sounds good. But anyway, the <laughs> T-shirts. Your sister will I always, I, I always apologize whenever comics want a T-shirt. I'm mm-hmm. like, I am so sorry. I'll throw in a... A CD, you can use it as a coaster. Because I never think they're going to listen to the fucking thing. You can sew some of my CDs together and make a shirt. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Why don't you turn it into a piece of armor? (laughs) I don't know what to tell you. But yeah. So Peoria, though, I did sell a lot of merch and nobody cared. That's awesome. Yeah. So has anyone, you said 20, has anyone walked away? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, I only have $10. And And you you don't break. No. No, what, 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 what am I in Kuwait? It's uh, <laughs> no, there's no, there's no. It's buy it or don't buy it. You're wow. fine. And I give there's away, no barter system in your world. Well, and I give the stickers away for free, and the stickers are actually expensive. Okay, well that's cool. Yeah, I give people five stickers a piece. Like I give How them two. How many stickers ju- do grown-ups need? Well, that's I mean uh, that's the spooky, a question. The spooky reading girl stickers. People are like, can I get another one? Really? Yeah. People wow. people want them. The um the dork forest and the Jackie and Laurie t- uh, stickers. People are like, hmm, I might have a kid I can give this to. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my god! I had someone come up to me at a at a show and say at P- in Peoria. It wasn't in Peoria. Where the fuck? I don't care. Uh, but the, it was it was because I I'm getting donations for the Dork Forest. It's a pay, there's a PayPal button, right? Yeah. And then some people have emailed me and said, "Hey, can I use Venmo?" Yeah. Which is the hipster kid yes. uh, new thing, right? Yeah. And I had somebody come up to me at a show and go, "Yeah, I'd, I'd rather do it via Venmo just because I don't like PayPal." And I didn't I didn't have the guts to tell them that PayPal bought Venmo. Oh. PayPal owns Venmo and has for the last three years because then they'll switch to some other hipster thing that I will also have to download I, now. I wonder if that's because of Peter Thiel, who was an no, no, early no. investor in PayPal but is not part of it now. Like, no, it has, does, you has don't nothing benefit to, Peter. I wonder no. if they're objecting to PayPal because oh, of that. Oh, because they're 10 years behind on Peter Thiel. Yeah. Possibly. Very you are possible. very hostile to hipsters who like Venmo. I am hostile I to people who, who who want to people. Just just mail me a sweaty 20. How about that? <laughs> it's a, Yeah, I got paid a lot in cash this weekend, which was hilarious. Because I haven't gotten that much cash. Oh, in, Peoria. Is, in, that a, is that a a lot of drug dealers in your audience, do you feel like? There's a gentleman's club next door <laughs> called, like, Pussy or something. It's literally <laughs> the dumbest. I forget what it's called. It might be called So purse. on the, not nose, uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> Boing. Um, so it was Easter weekend, yeah. lightly attended. Oh, my God. Every time I go on the road, it's it's because of, it's, we're, right, we have a hiatus because if it's a holiday, yes. and then you get there, it's like oh yeah, no one people. comes to shows on Thanksgiving night. Oh, no. hmm. 
Right. And uh, though he did tell me uh, that it was also the second decent weekend yeah. of, of Illinois' winter. Yeah. So it was lightly attended. And, but uh, he said I did one more person better than the person the week before me. Oh, that's good. John Doerr. That's oh, right. Yeah. And John Doerr, as far as I could tell, is a, I mean, he's, he's a famous. draw for, he's a draw for me. I would yeah. love to, I'd love, love to see more Jesus. John Doerr. And, uh, but across the street from Peoria is a stock car race uh, track that you can hear from the stage if there's a race. But that's they, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and what I did not know is right next to the stock car race track. Yeah. There's an all the time go kart track that I would have fucking gone to. Uh, during I must the day. work this gig once in my life. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. I'm out there telling people that you want to. I'm ke- I'm, I'm keeping the bridges now, open. Wait a minute. You're not allowed to speak for me. You gotta- I'm keeping the bridges open for you, Kill Martin. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's hey, I've awesome. always wanted to book her, and I'm like, I'm sure she would love it. You know, she's got this very important job with television, <laughs> so you'd want to really get her because she's very big At deal. At the moment, knock on wood, we're having like a strike vote, and uh, you know, if you we're everyone that's a good person is voting yes. <laughs> you want to, you want a hundred percent authorization to strike, and right. so the studios go, oh shit, this is going to be ugly, and they go, all right, let's talk. Okay. And if it's like if it's fifty fifty, they, oh, go, ah, they go. Ah, these guys oh. are shaky. They'll fold. Right. right so you right. can't. You can't. You have to. You have you to have project to... strength. Yeah, you do have to project strength, and and that's why unions have gotten us anything. Like that's why children I know. are not being burned alive in factories. I know. I don't so, understand it. And it's very annoying. More pe- more. Like my mom, a Trump voter, anti-union, I'm like, the only reason you can live with me is because of my union wage. Like right. this wouldn't, this or this thing, you'd be in a home right now right. if it wasn't for a union. Right. And then she it's... shuffles off to her room to watch Netflix. <laughs> How about Patreon? Did you know, somebody was telling me they make a lot of money with, oh, their podca- with their podcast on Patreon. I don't know what that means though. Well, I do. Because uh, I was on an edible a... at the time, and I, I just took in the information, but I, I couldn't uh, engage in debate. No kidding. Um, yeah, Patreon. Everyone keeps telling me to do it. Uh, here's what I think of it as. A third job, uh, which I've already got uh, three jobs. So Why is uh, it a third job? Then it would be the sixth or fourth. Uh, math isn't easy right now. It's hard. Uh, I can't <laughs> because well, you have to you have to create special content just for Patreon people. It's another place to post stuff. It's oh. another place to create content. It's another so place. So they to have the free part you. of the podcast, and then they have the pay part. Is that what you do? A whole other set of podcasts that would only go to the Patreon. You do a whole other in addition. Yeah. In addition, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's a whole other. Uh, you just lost me. <laughs> right. I barely want to do this one. Well, Another let me tell you one? something. It's 10 o'clock on a what? A Monday? A Monday. Uh, so um, my flight take boards at 530 tomorrow morning, which is. What the fuck? I don't Why know. do you do this to yourself? I have no idea because going? I'm going a day early. No. So I could have. Oh, my God. And I did it a day early on purpose so that I could be there in time at to sleep. At 7 in the morning? Yeah, I don't when need can to you check in. What, where are you going? I'm going to Minneapolis to do a benefit for the Children's Crisis Center. Okay. So there, uh, uh, nobody has a leg to stand on for the reason I'm going. Right. But um, and I'm going. My family lives there. It's with Acme. Acme asked me to do yes. nothing, never. And uh, but I'll tell you this: there's five other comics on this thing. Mm-hmm. I'm flying three thousand miles to do twelve minutes because they're all headliners. They're all amazing comics. But I think they need me because I am the only woman. And they're I'm, they're all amazing comics, but it's yeah. but it's Chad Daniels, it's Cy Amundsen's thing, right? So it's Cy, Chad Daniels, Sean I don't Patton. Know Cy. Uh, he's a Minneapolis guy. He's, okay, uh, whatever. He's very funny. Um, so uh, Sean Patton and um, David Huntsberger and Chad Daniels and um, myself. That's and, a great show. And one other guy. And you guys are all doing space. twelve. Well, I assume it's an hour and a half show, right? Maybe. Um, What's again, six I'm, not, I'm not great at math, but that seems six like six into ninety minutes. No, that's five. Five times ten is fifty. Five times two is ten. So that's sixty minutes. So the so MC is m- going to do a half hour. So maybe we're doing fifteen. So that'd be good. Y- good for you for having better math than me. I don't know. <laughs> I just got off a flight You're last very night. Very defensive tonight. <laughs> I just want I, uh, that I, noted. I, oh, I did. Uh, I, I, I took care of myself right. Okay. Wait, so okay. So you. you uh, Peoria was good. Peoria was good. I have a story. You two on Saturday. Actually, the second show got canceled because of Easter. Fuck. 
But first show Saturday was amazing. It was the mm-hmm. best show of the weekend. We we're pretty psyched. The owner guy is hilarious. Super chat, yeah. really nice guy. Five, three radios, two TVs on oh Friday my morning. God, you told me that, and I. That's when I realized I didn't have to do this. Gig. Six a.m. He picks you up. Oh my God! And uh, so and well, you're like, t- wait, I'm usually boarding a flight unnecessarily. <laughs> 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 I know, but it's, uh, but I, I, I'll tell you this though. It was cause he texted me at six. He was like, I'm on my way. And he had mentioned cause that it, you know, it was a quality inn. Yeah. So You're it had staying co- in a quality yeah, inn. It had oh a, my God. It had a free couple waffle near right? the racetrack, near a racetrack. No, no. Yeah. I'm okay. four mo- I rented a car. I spent so much money on this gig, but oh, I wow. did really good on merge and paid for it's fine. It, it's and, car rental. It can't be too expensive in Peoria. Right? And Peoria the guy threw me some money for the, for the car rental. Oh, that's which was cool. nice too. And, but it, get this, it was the greatest thing I ever did because otherwise the only, it was called like, there was one place to eat that was walkable distance from this quality inn. And it was called like the pizza ranch. Pizza ranch. Oh my God. Yeah. And I didn't want to eat at the pizza ranch. <laughs> That's not and a breakfast place. No. And so I, w- I found the two hippie joints in Peoria and mm-hmm. had, had lovely meals at both of them. But Did you, what was your rental car? Was it Enterprise? Uh, budget. Oh, okay. It Did you rent at the airport? Yeah. It costs a little extra. Yeah. If you get them to take you into town, and usually this is the way Enterprise was when I was renting cars a lot on the road, okay. is they pick you up at where you are. Yeah. And it's way cheaper at, on a day rate from Enterprise if you rent in the city as opposed to. And then they'll drive the you to the airport? No, but isn't the club going to take you to the airport? Um, they or is might. that part of why he reimbursed it's you? It's pro- probably okay. why he reimbursed right. well, me. So, I mean, because then, then he didn't have to do time. anything. Um, but and did it you was... see the the statue? Is there a statue of Richard Pryor? Yeah, yeah. I did a little Snapchatty thing oh, about cool. it. It was great, and um, he drove me right by it. It was it's a actually really nice statue, neat. As opposed to the statue of Henry Winkler in uh, Milwaukee of the Fonz, <laughs> which doesn't look anything like Henry Winkler or even the Fonz. It looks like Richard Pryor. That's the <laughs> exactly. So yeah, but here's the weird story. So it's it's next to the strip club mm-hmm. and the bartender. So I told this story to Andy, and Andy, to some extent, you know, raised by lesbians, um, yeah, is like I don't know, kind of in many some ways, like a better feminist than I am, mm-hmm. because essentially he'll hear a story and he's like, as a white man, I would not tolerate that at all. Interesting. So as a yeah, as a woman, course. you course. should not have to tolerate that, and that is his definition, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh. And but I so this is what happens, right? So and I started the story the same way. I'm going to tell it just the same way, which okay. is the bartender, nice guy. Okay. In many ways, a real nice guy and and super friendly and great. Loves the strip club next door. Right. Has free tickets to it for people who want to go. Yeah. Um, is gross. <laughs> so I walk up to get a soda water and cranberry juice. <laughs> Right. At the bar, and he's talking to the waitress, and the waitress says something about her kid or about something. Um, something's happening. I miss this, the entire setup, but this is what he says. He says, well, I don't believe you. I think, and he pulls his phone out. He's like, I think I'm going to have to take a picture underneath your skirt. Oh, my God. He said that out loud to a woman at work, and I said, what the fuck just happened? And uh, which is how I like to respond to things. <laughs> and the waitress goes, right. Right, and that's he, not... what Rob, the bartender, so it's goes. It's like you're the first person that's ever objected besides her, and she finally has a witness to her degradation. Right, and so Rob, instead of going, "Oh yeah, yeah," he goes, "What? What? I just she's my sister. Does that help?" No, oh, no, the no, it doesn't. Is a sister? Yeah. Oh my god. And I was like, "No, no, it does not help, Rob. Uh, it is all kinds of terrible." And um, so I tell Andy the story, and I'm like. And Andy's like, no, that's that's a goddamn nightmare. And I said, I know, but the guy's all right. He's an okay. And he's like, stop talking. <laughs> and uh, and so we I put think, up with so much shit. We don't so, even realize. We don't even realize. And I thought, well, maybe Andy's a bigger. But Kyle's reaction was the correct reaction as well. And then I thought, well, I'll tell this other guy who's just a guy that I know this story. Mm-hmm. And even that guy who is a guy who is around a lot of... He's, a he's sports, probably taken up skirts himself, correct? Well, he's a sports chiropractor, so he hangs around a bunch of po- professional how sports... Do you, how do you know? 
he's my chiropractor. Oh, okay. So, um, but he deals with a lot of like the skateboard guys, and, okay. and and so it could be douchebags that he's hanging out with, right? Mm-hmm. But even he goes, "What the fuck did that guy say?" And I was like, "You're right." Oh, thank God, this song is coming on. I don't know if anyone can hear, but there's uh, some. some they probably going can't, on. but we can feel it in our vaginas right but now. Th- but I told you, <laughs> it's coming up you through that. the <laughs> through the floor. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, so, but I, but I told you that because we deal with so much bullshit. Yeah. And this woman, you're right. That's the first time anybody was like, "What? No, yeah. no, not okay, buddy." Even though he is a perfectly. <laughs> oh man. Um, Super nice. I bet he makes more money than wait than the waitress. Do you think? Does the bartender make more money than the waitress? I don't know. I don't know. When I tipped out hmm. the staff, the waitress seemed pretty psyched. But when I tipped out him, he seemed pretty psyched. I so. told you that Ed M.A. story, right? About tipping the Waffle House waitress? No. I worked with, you know, you know Ed M.A., yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. I haven't, I don't know where she is. I haven't seen her in decades. Right, right. Hopefully still working. Murderer. A fucking killer on stage. Well, let's look her up and maybe Comic of the Week one day. Yeah. Um, anyway, she was, we were working it's at. It's M.A.E., if I remember. Yeah, Ed M.A., yeah, yeah. A- M.A.E. We were working in, um, at Joker's in Dayton. Why weren't you? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> with um, D. Williamson. And who uh, is a guy who passed away recently. He had cancer in uh, North. He was from North Carolina. Funny guy. Nice right. guy. Just like, oh, mm-hmm. fuck. Young guy. Parent. Every just every right. wrong on every level right. that, he would, that he would die. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we were, we all went out together and I was featuring and she was headlining and he was emceeing. This is a while ago. And um, we went to the Waffle House after our Tuesday sure. or Wednesday night show. And uh, she tipped the waitress 20 bucks, which buys 10 Waffle House steaks. <laughs> and I don't think the way it, it never, this is like in the 90s, never got a $20 tip, I'm guessing. Right. In Dayton. Right. right? And in then Dayton, we went never. back the next night and she, like, it was like she, she opened the door. <laughs> Come on in, y'all. Yeah. I mean, just greeted uh, Etta and the and us like we were famous. royals. Yeah. 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 It was. Um, oh, that's cr- That's. Yeah, whatever. I once tipped um, at a at a hotel. It was, I don't know. I I think I I'd stayed there like six days, and I only tipped like three or four bucks a night, right? I mean, I'd read that you're supposed to tip three or four bucks a night at a hotel. Oh, really? For each night that you stay, okay? If you could afford it, yeah, if you yeah, can't, yeah. Do whatever you got to do. But um, so I left this woman twenty bucks because it was a Vegas gig. Oh, and yeah. So I was there sure, for sure. the entire week. Yeah. And the the. The maid chased me down at the elevator. She was like, oh, my God, thank you so much. And no, I, seriously? Yeah, in was, Vegas, she wasn't even used to that? Yeah. Uh, I bet people are worse in Vegas. Boo. Boo. God damn. Yeah. Um, so, well, okay, you told me a story last week that we can't repeat. <laughs> but we'll re- we'll we'll repeat it like we'll mask it in a okay. couple months and no one will know. No one will know. Which but one here, was it? You know the one you called me to tell me? Oh, God. It was fucking the greatest Okay, but this is when I, I have to mask. But okay, so I was at a club, a club. Okay, and I saw at the club, um, wasn't billed, but was going to do a set on the show, a like an A list comic who, um, it w- in, in the late night world, would be a first guest. Oh, doesn't wow. have to do a set, right? Okay, and uh, and I hadn't seen this person for like at least a decade, right? Okay, but I knew this person from. You know, our years together. Oh, right, right. Whatever. Yeah. So, and I had seen their name on the grid. So yeah. I, so the person goes, hey, Laurie, it's blah, blah. Thankful. And you know what? Bless their heart said said their name, even though I knew who it was. Right. I was like, oh. This is you know, how it ought to be done. Why doesn't everyone else do? Why does the why, why does the lead guest on a late night show introduce themselves with their name and not, you know, the one person I met once at a gig five years ago? Yes. Okay. So... <laughs> So I said, hey. You I, remember me. Yeah. Don Rickles. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I said, hey, I saw your name on the grid. You're going to be on the show soon at Conan. I can't wait. And the person goes, I was on last week. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Listen. Listen. I don't always watch the show. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you're busy working. I mean, I, I watch the comedy, but I don't watch. Sometimes I don't watch the guests. Sometimes I don't even know. You know, if there's a stand up I know or I think I know, I go visit them. But when they're the lead guests, you don't necessarily yeah. go bother the, the A or the B guest. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah. It's, I, you, um, I have this. Uh, first of all, here's, uh, oh, yeah, here's who it is. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hilarious. Uh, Kyle did a little research on uh, on our good friend Etta May. She's booked through next February. What? Yeah. She's booked all, Wait, for the what, next what, year. Like what rooms? She does Can uh, you cru- read? Cru- cruise ships. Cruise ships? And the, uh, she's part of a package tour for Lady Southern Comics called the Southern Fried Comedy Tour. Genius! I a, love a genius! <laughs> next month she is in Hawaii for seven days. What the fuck? <laughs> Good for you, Etta May. Good, Good for you. Good for you. Oh my God. And, uh, she is raking money in left and right <laughs> Good, by saying y'all. Oh, right, that's it. I love it. Do you, I love it. Do you like the idea of a themed freak show? Yeah, <laughs> sign me up. Let me go. Right. Sign me up. I told right. you I tried to talk you into some stupid one last yeah, week. Yeah, you did. And you're like, oh, yeah. I have integrity. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> you won't. I that won't. won't last. All you have to do is find the right button. If, if it's, we uh, could get Etta May to tell us how much she's making, yeah. you will crumble in a second. <laughs> Can I tell you that a story my father told me that that is obviously uh, apocryphal because he's Elliot Cation. Yeah. Uh, he said, you, you know that story about uh, somebody tried to bribe uh, Lincoln, uh, Abraham Lincoln, on the, and he, pu- he punched a guy on the steps of the White House. And I was like, what? He said, yeah, supposedly a guy um, came up, tried to uh, bribe Lincoln, and he said no, and then he punched him, and the journalist said, why'd you punch him? And I guess Lincoln said, he was getting too close to my price. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. That's I know a great everyone line. wants. I hope that to true. be true. I uh, but true. I don't. I don't want Abraham Lincoln to have a price. He didn't seem real quippy, Lincoln. <laughs> I mean, no, he was. He was, he was totally. Yeah, he was yeah. super quippy. Oh, I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back. That's go back. One. Well, how far? I mean, <laughs> I only 18... go back to 1965. <laughs> well, 100 years before that, and then you're in. Well, he died that year, but um, <laughs> it was tragic. By the way, it was a career cut tragically short. Uh, <laughs> Him dying. Um, yeah, yeah, it was. I, I, I kind of tuned out. I didn't want that to go unsaid. That I agree, it was tragic. That he was successful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't, oh my God! Somebody. Oh, I know. I just did a dork forest, uh, a board game dork forest, and this guy was like, "Hey, um, I might have said something inappropriate. Are you? Go- if you listen to it and hear that, will you take it out?" And I was like, "No, no, I will not. <laughs> uh, it is the dork forest, and unless you know what it was and you want to listen oh, to it, oh, he didn't know." Yeah, and then he told me what it was, and he had just, I think he, um, it was about it was about a a, a a board game in space, and there were black people, and I think he referred to those black people as space Africans, and then corrected himself and said, well, un- unless they're not from Africa, and I was like, oh my god, that you no, just sound like a doof. He, you don't safe. sound, yeah, that's a dork. Although I safest. do like the phrase space Africans. Space Africans. I don't know what to do with it, but I think it's amazing. <laughs> it's not for you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. I wasn't you, trying to grab it. I just uh, I let just, me just tell you something. You don't get to write that story. <laughs> somebody, somebody, a person of color gets to write that story. <laughs> Please do. By the way, I would read that story. That and a, and a, and a quality underground railroad um, where there's actually a steampunk underground railroad. Uh, I would like that one also to be. There's written. something. There's a, there was an underground railroad book that Oprah champion named but by, by a guy named colson i think whitehead i gotta read it it's on my list anyway but i bet you it wasn't steampunk no it wasn't no and there wasn't an actual why don't you write that book <laughs> because again it is not my task um, um i by the way i just i got my manuscript it's called a manuscript now back Oh, that's and, right. Because uh, it's now that it's gone to the publisher, it is a manuscript, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, and a lot of notes, edits. a lot of notes, a lot of notes. Well, well, well. More than I anticipated, and because <laughs> you're um, a genius, and you think, no, no, this was done. Well, to some extent, it feels like it. You sure. know, there's there's some where I'm like, okay, yeah, I could, I see where that needs a little more explanation, and other. Others where I'm like, oh, I, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't agree or I don't like this. I don't think this sentence needs a tail. Yes. <laughs> I think it's tail. done. I don't think it needs yeah. 10 more words added to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I'm just sort of going through it. And I, and I was so depressed that I couldn't look at it for like five days. And then I'm that I, I was like, have this to. isn't the way that professional handles things. Right. I just have to go. But there's right. so many of them. Right. I mean, every, the, you know. 
every page had a had some sort of note. Had, it felt like it. Maybe yeah, not. Maybe some not. pages have more than one, and then I don't know. It was. Uh, it felt quite overwhelming. Well, um, I started just going through it and just going. Just I accept massaging. this one. You could think you can accept it or reject it, and right. then I guess if there's a strong feeling on the other side, we really They'll feel like this. I guess I don't know. Well, I have to tell you that uh, as a comic, I don't like any feedback. Uh, the feedback I'd like to right. get is just laughter or lack of yeah, laughter. Great and then show. I will Thanks. Move forward. Yeah. And but I, have you ever done the Risk show, the storytelling Risk? I don't know. Kevin Allison from the state. Uh, he runs a. It's so. a storytelling show out of New York, and I think he does one here. It, he does one here. Uh, yeah, I, of course he does. Mm -hmm. And but he likes you to tell him the story. Over the phone, and then no, give I haven't you notes. It. Yeah, no. And um, I, um, the first time, I was furious because it doesn't pay anything, and yeah. so I was <laughs> beside myself with 100%. rage. Hundred percent agree. Yeah. Would Edda May do that? <laughs> no. no. She's our new spirit animal. Exactly. Seriously. And uh, so the, um, but uh, but I I had done these other storytelling things that had made me write them out mm -hmm. and then read them. So I had written out the story that I was going to do, and I said, I'm not going to tell you the story. I'm going to send it to you. And so I sent him the story, and then I got notes back, and I was just as angry. <laughs> uh, but here's the here's the crazy thing about notes. I did I I took them into I I did another pass, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with another pass. No, because it's it, always it, it will to, yeah it's it, fine, and it and it made the stories better. So I still don't enjoy getting notes from him, but I do I do them just because it. it it's a it's a new set of eyes. I I actually don't mind it. I, at, once I get over the hump of going, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. But um, let me ask yeah. you this: Do you know what a tractome is? No, a tractome. Tract T R A C T T O M E. Oh, home. home. No, let me write it down. Tract. Okay. Home. Nope. You you don't know that phrase? Oh, tract. Wait, tractome. Like a tractor. Uh, they're, they're... no, not tractor. Oh, wait. T R A C T. Home. Tractome. Do you know what that is? I think so. Isn't that what my house is? Yeah, like a cookie cutter house. Yeah. Right. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why taking it out of with no sentence around it made me not go no, uh, somewhere maybe, weird. But listen, in my book, that's in a sentence. And next to it was a giant question mark. <laughs> I was like, wait. People know. And then I look. And I, I, what I did was I went to the New York Times and I Googled the phrase tract home. And it's used, you know, without explanation. In, in many of... in articles, well, so to me that's common knowledge. Then do you... I don't want to slow it down by explaining what a tractome is. No, here's... it's not. Ne it's not important enough. What I did was uh, when I use because I use that to describe our house, but yeah. I call it a 1950s tractome. Oh, I see. Yeah. So that was. You can use that. Oh my god, that's the worst thing I've ever said in my oh, life. I'm <laughs> gonna cross you out right now. <laughs> um, guess what? What? This is the most amazing thing. To me, yeah. I a, a couple a, about six months ago, I got so, I I first of all, I'm very stressed out about the lack of bees and butterflies. Oh, in the world, yes. All right. So I I have a giant plant in my front yard that it, it's like a bush, and there's a million branches, but they grow they grow on the ground and then they grow up. So it looks like a spider on its back with a leg sticking up. Oh, but is it milkweed? A, no, 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 not this one. But it's it's. It's got like 50 branches and they have yeah. these little purple flowers. And it, so it's, I'm, the house is covered in bees right now, which I, I love. I feel yeah. like I have a private army ready to attack anyone. <laughs> helping helping to pollinate to other things. Yes. But so a couple, I don't know, maybe like six months ago, I noticed one monarch like in the in the midst of the bees and the flowers. And and uh, so I did get a milkweed, like yeah. just a teeny tiny plant. And I put it in a pot and it grew and grew and grew. And as of right now, I have two monarch caterpillars in my milkweed plant. We? That's and, awesome. And hold on. I've been tracking them for like three days, three <laughs> or four days, like obsessed. You know, morning, How is it noon, going? Night. How is it going? Where are they? What leaves are they on? They're mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. They're like sure. busy. They're eating. They got to eat as quick they as possible. They got to eat. One of the caterpillars... Uh, sewed a little chrysalis for herself tonight, so she's all sewed up and ready to become a butterfly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very exciting. It is exciting. Well done. Thank you. Um, I planted uh, some zucchinis, and uh, in our vegetable, I'm, I'm doing it row by row because I'm only home for a fucking heartbeat. Yeah, you're hardly and, ever home, right? So Does I'm Andy like, tend to any of this stuff. Well, he, the deal is, is if I plant them, he will water them. 
<laughs> and so I plant them, and then he waters them. Okay. And uh, except for Tiberius, completely consumed. The I only, lizard, uh, the dragon. Yeah, the iguana. Yeah, he, he ate one of. He ate two of the plants. He ate, so he's uh, just zucchini. allowed to roam free. In the backyard, okay. he, every day he gets like an hour out. Okay. So if if we're if we're home, just because okay. you know what what kind of life is that? Sure, in a exactly. And so he's just in the backyard wandering around, and um, so he did eat one of the zucchinis. But zucchinis are notorious for um, uh, producing hundreds of zucchinis. One oh, really? Year, yeah, yeah. I one, wish I liked to eat zucchini. You might like, I make a, have you ever had that uh, cucumber salad where they're uh, shaved real thin with a red onion and then uh, some rice wine vinegar on it? Mm-mm. Uh, it's lovely. That's and you can do Midwest that. Food. That's but except that's a cucumber and that's not zucchini. You can swap out a zook and it tastes almost the same and it's nice. <laughs> No, no. It's uh, a an- and Andy won't eat zucchini if it because uh, there was a bad summer when his mom put it in everything. He won't eat anything where it's hidden. He's like, if I'm going to eat a zucchini, it's going to be a fucking zucchini. And he's like, we will grill zucchinis. Oh, where you subtly, yeah, okay. like there's no hiding it in bread. Oh, I got gotcha. you. He hates zucchini bread. I like zucchini bread. Oh, do you like zucchini bread? Yeah, that's because you like sugar and bread, uh, because that's all a zucchini Again, bread is. Again, another attack on me and out of <laughs> a lot of out judging. Of nowhere, a lot of judging. It's it's true. Did you see that picture, the, my Delta saga? No. What happened? Oh, did you miss the picture? Yes. The weirdest thing happened. So I'm flying back from Peoria. My flight was delayed. It's the third time in a, like a Are month. Are you in first class? Uh, but here's, here's, Who cares? I'm in more than Please first class. Please delay it. Here's, so I'm flying from Peoria to Detroit, Detroit to LAX. Yeah. Uh, Peoria to Detroit. Uh, there's no first class. Oh, it's one of those little ones? Yeah, it's yeah. a little one. So I get off the plane in Detroit, I have a two-hour layover. There's a woman on the jet bridge with an iPad with my name on it. Whoa. And I said, and I said yes. And she said, uh, Jacqueline Cashian. <laughs> and I said, yeah, sort of. And she said, I'm here to drive you across the tarmac to your gate. No. And I said, wait, my layover's like two hours. And she goes, it's just a courtesy. We, and I said, is it because I'm Diamond? And she didn't want to imply that it would happen everywhere and all the time. So she was like, it's just a courtesy we're doing today. And I was like, okay. Wow. You know, there's a family of four that needs to. That'd be. And I was like, I feel like Marie Antoinette. <laughs> and uh, she, t- so she takes me out the door onto the runway. Onto like yeah, the outside all, fuck gate. that family. You know what? Don't have kids if you don't want to walk in an airport. <laughs> I say that she, as a mother. She, she puts me a, it's the best mother. <laughs> and we get into a Porsche SUV. Oh my God. And as we're walking uh, to the, and I said, Are we getting into the Porsche? And she goes, Yeah. And there's this pause, and she goes, Do you want a picture? And I thought, Sure. I thought she meant a selfie with me, her, and the car. She just meant me in the fucking car. Wow. And so I did with, and I'm, there's two pictures of me on Facebook with me with this damn car. And I was like, What's happening? And United Airlines is what's happening. Possibly, very possible. And I said to her, "You know that thing where you have enough money that you don't really need things, and then free things happen all the time. <laughs> this is one of those things." And she laughed, and then she regrouped because she works at Delta, and she's like, <laughs> "It's just a courtesy thing that we, you know." It's, and so that's what's happening. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, that I don't know. Like tomorrow, I'm flying to Minneapolis, and I believe I am first class. So you're not paying for any of these first class upgrades. They no, just they, happen, right? Because I have so many miles. When right did now? you start with Delta? About three years ago. That's it. Mm-hmm. Maybe five. How many? I mean, I've always many, had Delta. How many but... miles are you doing a year on Delta? Well, here's the thing: I buy. You get double miles when you use that Amex card. Right. I have an Amex Reserve card, which gets me into the Delta Sky Club. The diamond status also gets me into the Delta Sky Club, so I could get rid of that reserve card. Uh, any Delta Amex card will get you free luggage. Mm-hmm. And that's why I did it, because the uh, the most basic Delta Amex card costs 100 bucks a year. Yeah. And you get two free bags per flight. Wow. And, so and that's it was where worth you put it. all your merch. Uh, that's totally worth it. Totally worth it, right? Because it's 25 bucks per, yeah. per way. So 50 yes. bucks a trip, right? Yeah. Paid off immediately. Yeah. The Delta reserve card... Is uh, even if it were two hundred dollars or two fifty or whatever, it would still pay for itself in a year, right? Yeah. So the Delta Reserve card is four hundred and fifty dollars. 
which I can write off. It's a credit off. card? It's, it's a credit card. It's an Amex? I, it's an Amex Delta Reserve card. I get three bags for free, which I've never used. Whoa. And I get the Sky Club, which uh, is saved me 20 bucks every because every time you walk into an airport, you spend 20 bucks. Right. On waters, so, on lunch. You go into a Delta Sky Club, you have all the free coffee and water and booze if you're into it, uh, and juice and iced tea that you want. Plus, there's usually some sort of food thing going on. Yeah. So you don't have to ever... It's quiet. Nobody nobody buys this for their kids. So you could be you could be buying coach all coach tickets this entire time, but because you have this reserve card, you're allowed to go in. Well, and every time, yes, yes, completely. Wow. Yeah. Does every airline do that? I don't know. Um, there is an article. My friend Deborah sent me this article about all of the fanciest. Yeah. Um, so there's uh, an American. I, I've only read American and JetBlue because it was the, this Hollywood. It was in the Hollywood Reporter last yeah. week. And the American lady met this reporter at the curb, took her through a back like alleys and something at LAX, like tunnels and bullshit. She ended up in a room in like a room with locks and bagels and Julie Andrews. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the JetBlue one. Um, Wait, JetBlue has something? Is Jet that the Blue mosaic has, thing? I think so, yeah. How do you get mosaic? I have no idea. I'm, i got to look this up. I'm yeah, on JetBlue all it. the time. There you go. You're on JetBlue all the time. So anyway, pick a card and stick to it is what I would say. And That's, I do yeah. two cards just because not everybody takes Amex. Yeah. And Southwest has a perfectly good Visa card. Yeah. And you get double points if you buy your flight on that card. Yeah, right, right. So you get the, the frequent flyer miles and the points, and then you get points for anything else you buy on the card. Man. So I've got like 45,000 points came just from the Amex card. Frequent flyer miles, nice. rather, or whatever. It's a great story. It I'm is, never telling it again. It's not a story. It's just useful information. It is useful information. It's so true. These young comics should pick an airline now. Yeah, really, you really should. Really. I think it was like eight or nine years ago that, that uh, Augie Smith told me to pick an airline. Chip Chinnery told me to pick an airline. What, what, but, what did Augie pick? Delta. Also. And I don't know Aren't what Chip did. you guys always routed through Atlanta, though? You can be or Minneapolis or Salt Lake. Mm. Those are both a couple of good right. hubs as well. And this Peoria trip was insane. I had to fly to Atlanta and then back to Peoria. Oh, and, my God. And then, so whatever. Hmm. <laughs> How much time, Kyle? Oh, oh my six. God. 30. Oh, we should do the comic of the week. Sure. Andy Erickson, ladies Yay. and gentlemen. Andy Erickson, Minneapolis comic. Um, last comic standing, top yeah. five. Yes. And um, she's great. Yeah, Silly, very funny. Loves a N D Y. Erickson with CK S O N S O N. Yeah. And I think is it at I Love Unicorns? What is it's it at? What do you mean she Andy loves Erickson. a unicorn? That's she loves thing. unicorns. Her thing really? is that she freaking loves unicorns. My son loves unicorns. Well, she is your son. <laughs> uh, she is a ten year old. She does have a ten year old boy. boy. Yes. She uh, has one? No. Oh, and she is inside one. of her brain. <laughs> and so, um so um wow, those are two stories I actually can't tell. Um oh. You'll text me, right? Yeah, I'll text you. I watched this documentary um, a couple nights ago called "While I Was Procrastinating Getting to the Edits on My Manuscript." <laughs> yes, <laughs> I just, that's when I decided to search right. Netflix. Yes, it's called uh, "The Seven Five. and it's about these dirty, filthy cops <laughs> at uh, in a. Um, a precinct in Brooklyn called the seven five. Okay. And the one guy's name is Michael Dowd. He went to prison for 12 years for, I don't know what the charges were. He did a lot worse shit than he was, what he was convicted of. Right. And he, it's really interesting because he's funny Mm -hmm. and he's likable. Sure. And he reminds me. And I think a lot of people, when I started searching Twitter, other people's responses of Joe Pesci and Goodfellas, Ah. kind of that funny guy. But you know what? He's, well, he's a fucking a, psychopath, too. Right. He's a and, homicidal yeah. maniac. But I happen to notice, I guess a lot of male comics are just loving this guy. <laughs> oh, because because comics sit around and watch Netflix a yes. lot. And, and so and they're like, this they, is the guy. And they all want to be Goodfellas in a way. They, you know oh, what I mean? Not it's even like, in a way. They all want to. They love coming through the oh kitchen. God. Oh, they, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I like that. I like going through the kitchen, too. <laughs> My dad came and saw me at Zany's downtown Chicago, came yeah. through the kitchen because that's how they get people in mostly. Yeah. And my dad was psyched. That seems unsanitary. The entire crowd goes through the kitchen? Mm, 
Oh, oh, you oh, mean? Wait, no, oh, no, no. Okay, all right. No, no, that the because the, the the front door is right by. This, but after the show begins, oh, if I you gotcha. show up late, gotcha. they bring you through the kitchen. Okay. And my dad, of course, showed up late. <laughs> it was the last time my father saw me do stand up, and I, of course, got the forty five minute note session afterwards. <laughs> Who doesn't want to have a um, note session? Yeah. So it was just sort of. You know, like, it's so easy to forget this. these people are fucking animals, you know? Right. And beca- this guy was, he was selling his services as a cop to drug dealers so that he would let them know if other cops were investigating <coughs> him. Oh, he was that guy. Yeah. And, you know, so he's obviously, he's busy, he's got his hustle going on, and they're just letting people deal drugs on the streets. And two of, some, some of those drug dealers shot to death another cop. Oh, so wow. it could That's be argued all... that if you guys had been doing your fucking job, <clears throat> that other cop wouldn't have been shot to death. Right. But you know what? They don't really they cut. They let you know that happened. <clears throat> but I, I felt like they leaned a little bit too much on this guy's charisma and how funny he was. Because it's better television. Yeah. And he's out of prison now. And he's got, you know, he used his money to buy a condo on Myrtle Beach and he still got it. And it's like. Have you, you ever been to Myrtle he kind Beach? Of, like, I know he was been he was in prison for 12 years, but he kind of won. And it's shitty. <clears throat> it is shitty, and I'm you're not ha- surprised. You're, you're almost choking to death right now. <clears throat> I don't know what is going on. Uh, Kirkman, if I have nodes, I caught them from you. <laughs> I caught them from you. I didn't Jane know they Kirkman. were contagious, are they? I don't know. But, oh, I, I listened. Uh, you know, I did that ad thing on Pandora I told you about, right? Yeah. And then, I, and then so. Wait, tell <clears throat> me again. <laughs> if you have a channel on Pandora, you can record. Could you tell I was lying? <laughs> Last episode. Other people remember. Well, it wasn't an ad. It was an ad. It was essentially you can leave a message for everyone oh, who listens. Oh, said listens. message. That's a different. Oh, right. But, okay. And then you were the one who said, so like an ad. Tractome. It's a tractome. You didn't what know was. what a tractome was. It was not offhand. It's a, you seem super defensive. <laughs> like, I, like you think I'm attacking you. There's a lot of maybe I. I'm um, jealous of your road life. That's why I can't. When I hear two, if I hear more than five minutes on uh, of it, I'm like, ah. Well, this when this one drops, I'm doing a show downstairs, Nerd Melt with Ophira Eisenberg. Oh, cool. We're voice doppelgangers, you know. Uh, she has that show and Ask Me Another. Yeah, I think what? accent doppelgangers, but you have a more of a scratchiness to your voice than Ophira does. I have nodes. I think it's a new thing with the nodes. It isn't okay. It sounds but good. It's uh... you and Kirkman. You guys sound scratchy and good. But I was listening. Essentially, at Pandora popped. I'm going to tell three stories at once. Okay. Pandora popped up the Feinstein album. Mm-hmm. This Feinstein album. And Rachel's. Rachel Feinstein, okay. and it made me laugh. So she's so oh, freaking great. funny. Yeah, she had this one bit where she described her mom as um, wanting to be like the blind side. Like her mom wants to find <laughs> a, a, a troubled youth, yeah. and fix that kid, and, right. but with violin yeah. lessons or something. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I was thinking about uh, that bit that I do about what white lady meat shield. And wanting to be the white lady meat shield. And I'm like, am I Rachel Feinstein's mother? And I was like, no, I'm not. Because I don't want to be a white lady meat shield. I think I'm being forced to be a white lady meat shield by our political problems. And, by the way, I can't write anything but political jokes. I'm very irritated with myself. Uh, I don't don't want to write any more political jokes. Okay, I did, um, let's see. I had kind of a light week. I I did a show. I did a couple shows last week. I did a show at the um, ice house mm-hmm. on Friday in the little room. Oh, that's that right. really good. And I think someone videotaped it and that might be a, a tape I could send to, to the powers show. that be. Yes. Yeah. Um, and Did then you I not get that tape though. Yeah. I got an okay, email good. that guy to make good, sure. Good. Um, but, uh, Saturday I took off to hang out with, uh, Miho and, oh, nice. uh, we saw baby boss. It was like a date night, you know, authors you night out. Baby boss. Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> Cause he's a, child yes and uh and how was it horrible you just <sighs> there's no i just it's it's one joke and then you sit through that for 88 oh my minutes God. yeah it's a but terrible they know, they know how to draw those eyes on those babies <laughs> they really make them sympathetic isn't that you know? what the family guy baby is isn't that the whole thing is that that baby is like in yeah po- has power yeah and is a baby yeah right okay i think um, we have 11 seasons of that don't we we don't need another 88 minutes yeah. of that well, it made a bajillion dollars. It oh, did, did it? Did very well. Oh, fair enough. Stop trying to be original, and you'll do something with your life. All right, I literally have got <laughs> to start writing some jokes about Korean food. What? <laughs> but I haven't. Uh, yeah, I haven't. Um, I haven't been working on my act like in a 
like six days or something. Mm-hmm. Like uh, just going up on stage, going all right. You know, the few times I was well, on probably stage, falling apart, but no, I'm kidding. Right, <laughs> your act. Six days. No, but it feels I, it, like it. But it feels like no, it. No, but yeah. it, sometimes you like I, I was so intense when I was in New York. Like every spot, I would yeah. listen to it and oh, uh, let me it, it, you, you know listen unravel to all of them? this and ravel this. Yeah, nice. I would be between spots most of the time. I would listen to the one I just finished, especially if it, there was like. One joke where I'm like, oh, I got that one. Because I was just trying to, like, you know, yeah. get every joke fucking perfect and mm-hmm. um, to set, put together a tape. But this is not, this isn't like, you know, there's times where you're writing big and it's expansive and you're trying to make some new stuff. And then th- other times where you're just trying to delete one or two extra words and, and then you delete too many. And then you're like, what happened? That joke used to work. And yeah, you yeah. use a scalpel on jokes. Mm-hmm. I, uh, well, it, it's amazing. So now I, I just feel like, uh, uh, you got sets this week. A little disconnected. Tomorrow night, I'm at he- I'm headlining at Flappers, and then okay. um, I, I gotta regular? pick up something. I don't know. I think it's a Yahoo. Fair enough. Um, I, I don't. You know what? I never mind Which, whichever uh, no, I one care. it is. Yeah. I, I usually have fun at those shows. I just yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, both care. rooms are fun. Yeah, I'm doing. This will drop after I've done it. So yeah, there's no point in. It's like <laughs> this is really bad promotion. <laughs> this is the but worst. I'm doing the Women in Comedy Festival in Boston. So I'm taking the red eye out on Friday night. Oh, okay. So this weekend. This weekend that just that, finished. Right, that just finished. Yes. You, you will have done the Women in Comedy in Boston. Yeah. So I'm, I take it, took the red eye out on, uh, JetBlue red eye out on Friday. And then the afternoon, 4 o'clock, I have like a panel. And then two shows at night. Then, yeah, I know. Sunday? Sunday. My flight, I don't know why I did this to myself. I must have been way cheaper. I don't leave till 9.30 at night on on. On Sunday night. Oh, you got to see if you can change that. I did. It's like a three hundred dollar change. There'll always be another three hundred dollars, is what my father would say. You know what? You have a kid and a mortgage. I know. Leave you alone. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> uh, fair enough. <laughs> Your father hits on women at the grocery store. Exactly. I'm not taking all of his. My advice. father hits on women. Uh, whoever is standing in front of him. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, uh, so I have all day in Boston on Sunday with. What I thought was yeah. nothing to do, but then I got contacted by <laughs> Harvard. Harvard? Uh, <laughs> Who is Harvard? Harvard. Oh, Harvard. The university? Ah, uh, the university. Harvard. <laughs> Pardon me. Yes. There, uh, it was somebody from, not Lampoon, but some some comedy yeah. group. Some like women in comedy. Anyway, they want to do an interview. Uh, oh, nice. Perhaps me with Marina Franklin because she's also going to be there. Yeah, yeah. Or separately, depending on our schedule. Didn't Marina establish she was one of the founders of Women in that Boston Festival? I thought maybe Marina not. Franklin. I'm wrong. Maybe. I'm well, wrong. she's a New York comic. Yeah. Um. I really. I'm probably wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to go with it. <laughs> but I'm wrong. Um. But she's anyway. Great. Yeah, so that's kind of exciting. And then, you know what? I guess I'll pay for the hotel room for an extra day, hang out till 8 o'clock, go to the... There's 100 bucks. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Well, I already told Harvard <laughs> that, that I was available. It, that you were available. Do a phoner. Who cares? <laughs> it's uh... um, This is my first... Uh, this is me trying to get my son into Harvard. Oh, there you go. Yeah, this is your I'm first step. S- establishing step a connection. One. I want to be considered like an alumnus <laughs> or alumni. I'll figure out which is the way. Everyone I know word. who's gone to Harvard is just like, it's just re- it's just like regular college. It's the hard part is getting in, and uh, yeah, and you're like, fair enough. So, um, I, I have to say, so everyone needs to come to this show with Ophira Eisenberg and I. By the way, oh, Ophira so Eisenberg it's tonight. It'll no no well, when you drop Monday. Yeah, so this will go. Uh, we're doing the Thursday 7 p.m. here at the Nerd Melt. Oh cool. She's hilarious. If you've never seen she's her, great. Uh, do stand up because she's fantastic. She's previous comic of the week. Yeah, and uh, and I promise to do 10 new minutes. Uh, about what? We don't know yet. Dang. That's how new they're going to be. That's how new they're going to be, you guys. So come on Thursday at 7 p.m. to Nerd Melt and see me and Ophira. You know, it's hard not to. I'm obsessed with politics. And normally, more more so now than usual, even though I already am because of... You've I always have to been, yeah. be inside them for monologue jokes. But um, but uh, it, it feels like the crazy, this crazy or correct people I'm following on Twitter, there's like a bunch of like people that claim to have ties to intelligence like Louise Mensch and Claude Taylor and John Schiller and and some a couple other people and they say shit's going down pretty soon 
like the the FBI's gathering, they have a ton of evidence. That's why they didn't take up Michael Flynn's um, offer for immunity because they didn't need it. I'm and, not gonna and hold he's my going breath. down. I I'm, I refuse to hold my breath. I just read. To, I just read tonight on Twitter. Jackie. We can. We can. <laughs> I <laughs> well, just read this on Twitter. Uh, well, then then we know it's There's true. There's audio of, of Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell talking about taking money from Russia and funnel you know funneling it into the. Trump Is there company. a way that all of these people could be incarcerated and in a chain gang that then could be buried underneath a volcano? That would be amazing. It would be amazing. Uh, someone was telling me that. Was it maybe uh, has a joke where he said, you know, I can't say that I want someone to kill the president of the United States. So allow me to do a weird metaphor. <laughs> and then, and then he it. built this amazing castle. And I, if, I hope that wow. it, I, I hope it was him. But if it wasn't him, I am sorry, uh, FBI, it wasn't. <laughs> so uh, whoever's oh listening. And, you may have just gotten the wrong person killed. <laughs> well, as, as long as he doesn't have a copy of the Koran. Did you ever see V for Vendetta? Anyway, I did. Uh, <laughs> so a week from, a week from when that. this goes up. Yeah. Oh, because the, the talk show host. Essentially, it's the talk show host. <gasps> oh, yeah. Remember him? I barely remember V for Vendetta. Well, there it's. Uh, well, we're living through it, so it's fine. <laughs> it's, uh, but we're going to be in Bridgetown doing a live Jackie and Lori. Yes, and and I think we're going to be in Birmingham, Alabama. We I haven't think... we haven't heard anything about her airfare. I'm, I'm like, what happened? <laughs> we might be doing the Birmingham. We're supposedly we're supposed doing... to be right. Yeah. So, but we're doing a Jackie and Lori on the Saturday of of uh, of of Bridgetown, which is May sixth or fifth or something like yeah, that. I believe, yeah, 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 fourth uh, or fifth. Yeah, and, um, and so I'm going to do a Dork Forest. And then we're going to do a Jackie and Lori. And then I have two sets that night. And then we're leaving on Sunday, which I think you're doing a Jackie and Lori. And then I think you have two sets. And yeah. then you're leaving on Sunday. Yeah. Are I'm, you really, fl- I'm really worried that I don't have enough new material from last time I was at Bridgetown. When were you at Bridgetown? Last year. Oh, okay. They're 12-minute sets. Go to the vault. You're fine. Well, this is this is the It's Always Good to See Lori Kill Martin. <laughs> festival <laughs> fine finally the oh that's right that that yeah. fuckwit who, who had that review listen she meant well i'm sure i'm gonna could i i'll, I'll be <laughs> I mad like for you, come you. To my defense I, I, you're he, like andy and i'm you when the bartender <laughs> exactly to me. so weird <laughs> it's uh i i had two articles come out about me oh neat. both of which by the way told the world how old i was Boo! But who fucking cares? <laughs> you know what? Fuck I can't you be. World. I can't be any younger than I am. No, so, but it was a bit of a shock. You're younger to see. than me by four days. So four hold on days. to that. Hold on to with my hat. <laughs> and uh, so, but it was it was shocking to see the number in print. I know it's weird. It is weird. But the win. It was funny because I was interviewed for the Winnipeg Comedy Festival, and she quoted. Something I said, I was like, oh, I was pithy this day. <laughs> and she said a nice thing. And then there was an article about this benefit I'm doing in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy interviewed other people about me. And other people were pithy about me. Neat. I'm, that's I'm cool. All cylinders over here. All cylinders. <laughs> Guy like, Branham said a nice thing. It's like seeing your obituary before exactly. you die. That's nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, when people say something nice about you in the paper. Yes. Hopefully mm-hmm. they will resurrect those t- topics. Oh, God. How much longer, Kyle? We're I think at 52. We're at 52. Eight more minutes. So Hold this on. weekend I'm working with Maria. Yeah. Where are you guys going? Um... Uh, t- uh, Phoenix and Tucson. Oh yeah, you have that. That will have just happened. So you're driving to Tucson. Yeah, we're gonna fly to Phoenix. Yeah, and we're gonna drive to Tucson. We're gonna fly out of Tucson. Tucson's great. I like it a lot. It's so Do pretty. You? Yeah. There's just there's mountains nearby. Yep. I mean, it's nice. You've got mm-hmm. some nice desert, and they have beautiful desert flowers. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah. You're not into Tucson. Um. My brother, who is the grumpiest oh, of my that's brothers, right. you lives have family there. there, and I love, uh, I love my brother. Sometimes I do not like my brother, mm-hmm. uh, my oldest brother, because he is a button pusher, and it is exhausting. Mm. So his children and his wife live there, and I like them. Uh, so I did. I wasn't going to tell anyone because I'm ge- genuinely. We're going to be there for what eleven hours, maybe. Are you going to pop by laughs and try and do a guess at? No. Have you worked laughs recently? No, I, I had to cancel because I got uh, I got a money gig. 
Was he and, was uh, Gary mad? He was fine. Really? really? He was super that's great good. about it. He was like, well, we'll rebook it. And it oh, was, that's cool. I was like, yeah, he was super nice about it. Great. Yeah, Gary, yeah, he's fine. I think he's mellowed out. He's mellowed. And what I was told, what, uh, what the first week I worked there, mm-hmm. the guy who helped me get the gig mm-hmm. said, what you should know about Gary Bynum, he said he doesn't want to talk to you. <laughs> He just wants you to come and do your job and then get out. And that's I was like, my dream come true that, of every that's club exactly owner. That's what I said. I said, that's what I want to do. I want to show up, do my shows, and have a soda and maybe a taco and get the hell out. Yeah. And that's all I... And and so because I didn't really... I was just polite and we just talked business, he has warmed up to me every time. And he's just like, how's it going? How's, and he's there's small talk. Yeah. It's But he's never overbearing. It's always awesome. Yeah. He's almost perfect. And his son, <laughs> his son's running it. His and he's son a, is he's running a great it. guy. He Casey. Is a, Casey's yeah. great. Yeah. Casey is a great guy. Mm-hmm. So they, uh, we what lost I, Gary Hood. We lost know? Hoodie. Yeah. He was a comic and uh, kind of ran the, ran the, the Tucson front. comedy scene. Yeah. But, you know, he, he, you, every every town needs like a Gary Hood to stay back and start in and help the new comics. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like like do things like say when you do an intro, you say the credits first and then the name. Like right. just dumb stuff like that. Yeah, you just know? just yeah, very much introductory to yeah. All here's of how the... to here's how the other stuff of right the was... other things you no one will tell you you know that you need to know just to be at, like a beginning comic. Right, you know? right. Just to make a show a show, mm-hmm. and and he was actually really good at that. Yeah, and. I'll say this, and this is not Gary Bynum. I'm thinking of a different comic, but there are clubs around the country. You've worked. I, I, I feel like that Dayton. Lisa Gr- Grigsby. That no, was room. I've never done that. I've never done Dayton Jokers. But uh, there were clubs like, they're like weird gigs where, yeah. the the booker will not stop telling you that he's not making any money. Oh God! Right. And yeah. he's just like, oh, you know, this is a bad week, and I'm uh, just I'm not making a lot of money, and you feel this pressure to somehow go, oh well, you can pay me less when you first start out. Right, right. Never give in to that. <laughs> Absolutely never. Yeah. Because they're lying. Oh yeah. And if you aren't good at whatever business you've chosen to go into, that isn't my fault. Right. It is not my fault. I came all the way out here, wherever here is. I, wherever here is, I have driven to Laughlin, Nevada. We're doing this. Is and that what happened? No, I uh, I haven't done Laughlin in a dozen years. And uh, clearly, I don't want to do it again, because I just mentioned it by name. Didn't um, Buddy Hackett's Buddy Hackett's son, Sandy Hackett, ran a room in Laughlin, right? Oh, yeah? yeah. I, never, I never did I that I never one. did it either. I just thought Sandy Hackett was a perfect, like... Vegas comedy name. It really is. A man named Sandy. A man yeah. named Sandy who isn't a bartender. Yeah. It's uh <laughs> there's always when I was a kid, Nancy, my stepmother used to always say, When you meet a guy who's a an adult man and he says his name is Joey or Jimmy or Billy or Bobby, that man is a bartender, Jackie. <laughs> and I was like, and that has not been true across the board, but it has been more true than you would think. More, you, you know, Bill Burr used to be Billy Burr. No, until I guess like like early two thousands. I came. I think he moved to New York as Billy Burr, and then and then cut it down. Oh, weird. Yeah, but I, it, for a while, people were so used to calling him Billy. It took him it took him a while to take oh, it well, down to Bill to t- bring it down. But now, so now it's Bill no, Burr. No Bill one, Burr. Yeah, Bill Burr. Grown up man. Uh, I just did uh, Dork Forest with um, Al Madrigal. Yeah, who they you know they do all things comedy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Their, um, that's what the Dork Forest is under. And did I, I did I tell you this that Al Madrigal's Dorkdom is the Jack Reacher novels? You did, and I hated it the first time you told me. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird because he gave me a Jack Reacher novel, and I took it with me to Peoria, and I read it. And there's no better place to read a Jack Reacher novel than in Peoria, Illinois, <laughs> because though I found two great restaurants, and oh. Uh, so, uh, someone called me uh, through my agent. They mm-hmm. said, hey, can you do, there's an idea for a show. Uh, we'd love you to host it. And it would be about food and about travel and about oh, comedy cool. and about all these different things. And I was like, oh, I travel and I like food and I'm constantly looking for the best place to get chicken mm-hmm. in, a, in, a, in a random town. And, uh, and in the course of the discussion, I said, wait, is this a reality TV show contest? And there was this pause, and the woman goes, yes, but hear me out. <laughs> and I said, uh, we got to be done. we got to be done talking, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm not good at them. I'm not a big enough diva. 
Uh, I, there's not enough drama on. If you want me to host something with sincerity and charm, I could probably do that. Yeah. And I'd care about those travel and food, so I could do that. But I cannot uh, housewife of Orange County fucking thing. So Okay, I'm going to write the question that I think Ed May would ask. Uh, yeah. How much money? Uh, Did you the, ask that? Never say no without a number is my father's uh, <laughs> fucking sewn on a pillow, and I did not ask. <laughs> she said, you, what you won, there was no money. There was no money. Oh. You, you won a show. If you, if you did it, you got a show. And I'm sure it was scale, that like reminds Last me of, Comic Standing. Yeah, Nick, uh, Nick at Night, Search for the Funniest Mom, too. Sure, Darlene Wesker won the first year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, she had a pilot, right? Yep. Did they go any further with it? Nope. But they, well, they, they shot it. Yeah. So there was Did that. Did they air it? No. no. Carol Leifer wrote on it. Yep. Right? Yep. It was the furthest they ever went. It was, you know, you know, like, you know how it is with, in my opinion, and I don't watch Darlene enough, Westgore is hilarious. Darlene Westgore, previous comic of the week, is hilarious. Yeah. And she, she was freaking out because she realized that she was going out for this funniest mom in America. And she was, she was doing fine. She was doing fine until it was time to do a set. And she was like, oh, this is on Nickelodeon. I can't, I don't have any material that's set for Nick. And and she called me in Australia. (laughs) I was in Australia and I said, well, what other, who others, what, you only have those jokes. You have to do your act because you just have your act. And then she won the whole damn thing. And it was awesome That's because it's proof positive that you can only do your act. And if you try to fix stuff. You're going to screw yourself. Oh, I have a different story. Oh, yeah? From, but I can't, I, I, a different, it, it could be liable, but it's, uh, it's about a very famous uh, female comic. Yeah. Right? From the uh, late 80s. Sure. Who uh, won a, some kind of VH1 thing. And right. And apparently she had no jokes and started doing stuff from other comics on Long Island that she knew. And Oof. everyone was pissed about it. And everyone should be pissed about yeah. it. Because it's not... It's like it's like when you could probably figure out who it is, but I don't want to, you know. Yeah, you don't have myself. to say it. Yeah, or, it's, light bulb uh, or whatever. I don't or know. whatever. Who cares? It's just in the, amortized. The, the, there's both. <laughs> there's both a amortized? tract house. Uh, so home. tract home. home. Tract no home. tract house. Yeah, tract Ma- house. Yeah, tract home. Fifties tract house. Wait, tract he, home. There's a finger up. One minute. Oh my god. No, that's an hour. Oh, bye. <laughs> Now leaving Nerdist.com. 